Welcome everybody to What Do You Bring to the Table? I'm your host, Rajiv Sathyal, and I have the pleasure of sitting here with Avantika. Yes. I got it right. You did. Okay, but the last name, this is going to be, okay, let me see. I've been practicing this, but I don't know if I'm going to nail this dismount or not. Uh, not even close. I could, no, that couldn't be right. No, you're it could like, not be right. It was like 90% there. You're, you're, you're a Bandanapu. Great. And good thing, like, wait, I don't go, I just go by Vantaka. Oh, that's good. That's easy. Okay. But you, I should know this because you starred in some Telugu films. I did. Okay, and that's how you got your start. Yes. Okay. And were you, so you were living in India or were you living here and going over and doing films? Well, originally I was. I was born and brought up in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and the plan was to go there for three months okay. and to just shoot a movie over the summer and come back, and then it extended to be three years. Wow. So yes, technically we were living there for three years, wow. but um, it wasn't the original plan. And you were living in Andhra? Yes. Okay, wow. See, I knew that. You did. Yeah, I knew the <laughs> good. Very good. Geography. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that part I got down. <laughs> the, the language was a little off, yeah. but hey, that's okay. Yeah. So you went there for three months to shoot a film? Yeah. Okay, so you booked it from here. I did. Okay, how did that even come about? They specifically wanted an NRI, like a non-resident Indian, sure. which is, I think, so random that right when I was like, I want to start auditioning, that right. an audition comes out for an NRI. And yeah. I booked it, and I I just think it was like, oh, it's fate. <laughs> like, right. It's like, I have to go now. Because yeah, I would have thought it's fate, not fate. I would have been like, no way, this cannot be real. There's no way. Sam, some, Sam. Sam. Somebody's trying to get me the Venmo of a bunch of money. There's no way this is possible. Was it posted somewhere just like on a site? Was it on Casting Breakdown? I mean, where was it? I mean, India's so, I mean, the casting, there's, there's no breakdowns, yeah, nothing so, like uh, that. Uh, it's Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so someone, I think, posted something on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And now that I think about it, it was very like that there was like, a Nigerian prince on the yeah. other side of it. <laughs> like, right. There wasn't. Like that was the plot of the movie. Actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't. Um, but it was just off of Facebook. Wow. Yeah. And you auditioned. I did. And I sent in a tape. Did a lot of people? Did, did you find out later a lot of people submitted for it? The thing is, in India, at least in the niche that I was acting in, which was playing younger versions mm -hmm. of like older actors. Right. There's. At least at the time, there were three girls, or three or four girls. That's it. Who would book most of the parts? There or here? There. Okay. okay. It's very different from here, which I think here it's so competitive, and for every single role, there's sure. always so many people. Hundreds. Yeah, but I think there rarely, unless it's deemed necessary, mm -hmm. casting directors would rather pick from a pool of actors who have already kind of acted. acted. <laughs> right. Just a little experience. <laughs> a little bit of a bar here. <laughs> maybe if you've done the thing that we're setting you up to do. No, but I think that's why it's also, it was so hard and so random for me to get that audition yeah. because rarely are auditions ever put out like that. No, totally. Normally in America, you'll see an open call and you'll feel like, hey, I have a shot. Yeah. I can, you know, but you never see it there. And no, that's it. And, but, but is it changing? Is that is that happening more and more there? Yes, it okay. is. With uh, with streaming and with Netflix, mm -hmm. I, a lot of the, at least, global way of casting mm -hmm. through a large process sure. and through a large pool of people. I grew up as a dancer, and okay. so that was predominantly my background. Why do you seem like a dancer? You seem like a dancer. Oh, thank you. Do you get that? I do. Just the way you carry yourself? I get that. Yeah, yes, I, I do. Yeah, I don't know why that is. I get all the years of ballet. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. Yeah, you know how to sit. <laughs> Did you hear about the ballet dancer who was so fat she had to wear a 3-3? Three, three? Get it? A 3-3, three, three, not a 2-2? Two, two? So we can cut that. Oh my god. <laughs> I would suggest it. I think. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble with that. This is one of the conversations I said. I'm going to get in trouble with the younger generation for all the shaming I do. You know, the, oh, this is going to be no, a problem. No, it was, it was a good joke. It's, it's a well-written joke. I know. Do you want to hear my dad joke? Yeah, this is my go-to dad joke. I love how that was assumed it was a dad joke, by the way. But no, it was. it was. Yeah. Have you heard of the movie Constipated? It hasn't come out yet. Okay, okay. I, I do this job for a reason. There we go. I do this job for a reason. Okay, yes, good, good job. I'm so, I'm so one. happy. That is a good one. There's no way you knew that. No, before. I never heard it before. That's incredible. That's because it hadn't come out yet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. What's brown, what's brown and sticky? A stick. What? That's so random. 
<laughs> get it a stick. It's brown and sticky. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. Do you get all of these from your database? I my oh, that's good. I yeah. like this. She can roll, she can roll with the funds. <laughs> well, I am a dad. I just became a dad. You so did? Now all these lame jokes I tell, there I have a reason for them now. You do. You my have son just... is a few weeks old. Oh. <laughs> this is true. This is a real thing. This is not a setup to a joke. It's like, it's like, it's like, like where's, where's the punchline? Punch yeah, what happened there? Enter your son. And I'm like, kidding. Walks in after a few weeks. He's, he's a fast learner. You know? As were you, because you were only, what, you were 15 when you booked this role when you went to uh, Andhra? Which one? Uh, the, the, the first one. How old were you? Oh, I was 10. You were 10? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is a really, while ago. I was really young. You were a child. Yeah. I mean, you're, not a, I mean, you're technically a child. You're an adolescent. <laughs> Do you consider yourself a child? Like, I am a child. It sounds like you're on a doorstep. No, no, I don't, but I don't like start with adolescent either. Okay, when you start with teenager? Yeah. Do you, you embrace that, 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 that word, teenager? I like young adult better. Oh, young adult. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's good, yeah. But are you a young adult? I guess you, well, you're a young version of an adult. Yes, Because when literally. you're 18, yeah, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Okay. Literally. Adole what, what do you think is the difference between adolescent and teenager? Adolescent just sounds... It, just, it sounds weird. It sounds like a weird word. It just sounds like something you'd read. Hi, I'm an adolescent. Yeah, right. It's not a word that people say. No. And I've, Hi, I'm an adolescent. I've noticed this because I spent so much, at least, I think the time that I spent in India, which is like 10 to 13, is like the time of your life where you grow your vocabulary mm. and you start to pick up slang and you start to pick up interest. And I spent so much of that time not speaking English and any right. English I got was from books that people have now noticed that stuff is just weird. I've, I've noticed that stuff is weird. I was making a reference and I was like, bodies strewn all over the ground and someone just went, what? <laughs> that is very, it's very descriptive. It's very, and like no one says strewn, but you is see- Is it strewn or strewn? This is also an issue. I can't pronounce anything, so I'll say words, but like my pronunciation is so is off, off because I don't hear maybe it. Maybe they were just thrown by. Maybe they were thrown by them. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. They were. But the, the, people now say, for instance, but they never used to. People yeah. like when they were giving speeches. You're not supposed to say for instance because people never said it. Exactly. Now they now they say it. I don't know. Why. Yeah. You book this role, you do it, you're there for three months. Do you book your next role before you wrap shooting? Yeah. Okay, and that's how it just kind of... I mean, that that shoot is supposed to be done in three months, and the shoot went on to like eight months. Well, that's not a big surprise. No, it's not. Yeah. And like midway, there was a two-month gap, and I was just walking around, just, I guess, looking for opportunities, and I think... Like, is this Hyderabad? Yeah. Okay, okay. Bumping around. <laughs> I know, that's really crazy. Yeah. And I've been there. It's just I had biryani every day and that's kind of what you yeah. do there. Can you I don't like biryani and it's so oh. bad to stay in Hyderabad and not like and not biryani. like it. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be like not liking sushi out here. <laughs> Are you a vegetarian though? I was. Oh wow. You're then, not? You were and you're not? Yeah, for some I I well, am, you were, my my son is, but all he drinks is milk. So like <laughs> when, when did this happen? I am vegetarian, but during shooting of my last film, I just, the, all of the vegetarian food and vegan food, I was just, I didn't feel like eating, so I just went back to eating fish. You went back to it, so you used to eat? I used to eat, okay. and then I was vegetarian for like two years, a year and a half. And then you went back? And I went back. And you're a pescatarian? Now I'm pescatarian. Okay, but you don't eat, like, land animals. <laughs> Is that something you'd read, not say? You'd read <laughs> adolescent <laughs> strewn about land animals, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. No, I don't eat land animals. Okay, but but fish are okay. No, I'm not gonna say that because I feel like there's gonna be an image like two years from now, yeah, and Getty images right. of me like eating chicken, and like, she like said, eating a chicken nugget. You're like, I didn't eat the chicken when it was killed. It was flying when they killed it. Okay, it was not on land. <laughs> it was not land. It was not a land. No, it was yeah. Explorer. yeah. So your mom and you go to India. You start booking all these jobs, and these are in Telugu. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you spoke it growing up. I did. I speak it fluently. Okay, and you, you still do. I still do. You're consistent with that. Not like the vegetarians. <laughs> no I judgment. I don't I need everything, you to so. shame me right now. I'm not shaming you. <laughs> okay, that's, great. that's an assumption you're making. I'm not shaming you. I'm just saying it's not like that. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. That's it's good. Not. And so Telugu and English and anything else? Or um, I can understand Hindi really well. Okay. And 
at least while I was doing Telugu movies, I was also doing Tamil movies. And I, at least the first movie that I did in Tamil was, I went from doing like advertisements in Tamil to oh. a film. And it was a film where this girl is trying to sue somebody. And oh. so she's like in court all the time. So there's a lot of words. <laughs> there's so many yeah. words. It's ridiculous. Right. Like 18 pages of just legal jargon is hard enough. Legal oh, jargon in, in English. It's yeah, hard. legal mm -hmm. jargon in Tamil. Yeah, that's very difficult. Yeah, it was literally just memorizing phonetics. Where do you feel like um, you, like when you booked the Disney thing, the spin uh, movie, was that the real, like, that's the biggest thing you booked? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you booked it, I mean, was that, that was an audition process and all that? That wasn't on Facebook. No, it wasn't. Okay. Actually, hold, it was, oh. in a way. Okay. So I auditioned for spin when I was um, 11 or 12. Okay. No, 12. I auditioned for it when I was 12. Okay. Um, and it was an open call audition no that way. my mom found on Facebook because okay, someone, mom. my mom's like on it. I'm saying. Yeah. That's she's impressive. on it. But some, some Indian, some Indian person reposted it saying Disney doing this open call casting for oh. young Indian girls. And my mom, and again, I was in India at the time. So that was my first <clears throat> American audition kind of ever. And that was my first tape that I sent to Disney. And Nobody watched that until my mom actually got a hold of the casting director herself and kind of was like, hey, there's Dude. this tape. Did you even get it? Auntie Power. Yeah. I'm telling you. And the casting was Shameless. Like, I love this. And this the is casting so good. was like, no, because there's a lot of people. It's been one, two days. <laughs> That's so incredible, that kind of follow-up. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot, but um, so they watched How does she know what number to call? Is it just, she called the number on the Facebook post? She called like a number of a number of a number. Yeah, like tracked it down. She tracked it down. She called like, I don't even know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was like the dentist of the assistant of the casting That's director. That's the way to get to it. Yeah, it was so random. She explained it to me one time. I don't even yeah. remember because it was so That's why you guys so are good so at running call centers down there. I think oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I went there. I totally went there. <laughs> I even said down there. Like, it like was enough. It's bad enough. I like really. Oh my god! Football. That's you're that's, that's, canceled. That's can't, it. That's no, but you're brown, it. so you can't. It's, yeah, I can't be canceled for that. So your mom calls the person and then tracks down the number. Yeah, and, and so they the watch person. it and they're okay. like, "We like her. We we'd love to give her a call back." So they send my tape to Disney headquarters in LA, Dude. and. And they they watched the tape and they were like, she has lots of potential. She just needs a little bit of work. So <laughs> they're like, we'd like her to take coaching with this with this teacher. And so oh. yeah, so like they, Disney recommended this. Yeah, mm. yeah. Disney was like, so your daughter wants to make it in the industry, but she doesn't have the talent currently to do so. So here's a teacher, take it and improve. Sure. And that's what they did. So they gave me a teacher and and I worked with her for like a day or two and and then sent in like a revised tape and they were like, we love her, we'd love for her to come to LA and meet us once for like, I guess a callback. And so that was my ticket to LA. I think, I think that was the first time I came to LA, at least old enough to remember it. So. Oh, wow. So I came to Disney. And you were 12 years old. Yeah. Okay. And I came to Disney and I came to the headquarters and. I love how girls your age are like, I want to go to Disneyland. You're like, nah, I'm going to Disney. <laughs> Headquarters. Go to the headquarters. The headquarters. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, so I went there and and I went onto the 21st floor, which is like a big thing. And so, and I met, and then the project <laughs> got shelved because I it was going into development for you know I guess they wanted to improve the story and improve the content. So like you know this story has a lot of potential, but you guys need to work with the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> for a couple of years. I know. Just. <laughs> Give it a couple of years. <laughs> we thought a day or two was gonna be enough. Yeah, a day or two for the uh, for the talent, but the, the story is <laughs> it needs a couple of years. That's a long time. That's development hell. That's what they call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it came back beginning of last year, and and I auditioned for it again, and they told me in the room. Oh, you had to audition for it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because okay. At, the, at that point. When I was 12, it was just a callback. I'm sure yeah. like four or five or even 10 other girls had probably come to Disney. Okay. And then it got shelved. Like no one got, had put you, no one yeah, had yeah, yeah. at that point. Okay. And so 
beginning of last year I auditioned for it again and, and went through the whole process. It was like four or five months and they told me in the room that I booked it. You booked it in the room? Yeah. That's rare. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's very amazing. rare. Mm -hmm. The video is like, I think they want to put it online, but it's such a ridiculous video. Why? Why would they put it online? It's, it's just really, because I say I can understand Hindi really well. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, it's a resume. So you like fib some steps. You're like, okay, you can understand it. So you can speak it really well. Hence, thus. And so I, obviously that's what I put on my resume. What I mean is I'll be able to speak it by the time I get the job. Exactly. Like it's, you can <laughs> learn anything. A friend of mine told me that once. He goes, he goes, your ambition knows no bounds, but I hate to break it to you. You're not going to learn how to play the guitar by Thursday. And that was a quote that has stayed with me for so long because I was trying to write, I was really trying to play the guitar in between, like on on the on stage. Like I can do this. I can do one liners and play the guitar. And he goes, "Bro, <laughs> bro, I hate to break it to you. You're not gonna, yeah, not by Thursday. No. <laughs> what about three months though? Yeah, maybe a couple. Yeah, maybe I a can, couple you months. You could do it. Yeah, and like no one is. I was like, no one's. No gonna one's gonna ask. check. No one's gonna check is what you're thinking. It's mm -hmm. Right, and so. They come out into the waiting room and they dismiss everyone and they're like, Avantika, we'd like to have you back in. And I'm like, oh, they probably want to re-record the tape just with my hair back or something like that. And, but I'm really nervous at this point and not good nervous because I'm like, something went wrong. And that's is there good nervous? I guess there is. There is good nervous. Okay. There are good nerves. And this was not. This is not one of this. This is not, is not one of those. Okay. No. And so I go in and they're like, Gary Marsh, who's you know, the very Caucasian president mm -hmm. of, of Disney. Like, it's he's so sweet. And it was just like, he's the one who's putting me on the spot. He was like, so I'd love you to, tr I'd love for you to translate something in Hindi. And I was like, at this point, I was, the video's on it. It's, it's so ridiculous. Me just going out of the way to convince them that I'm really good at this, but I can't do what they're asking me. I was going to say, yeah, how do you even Yeah, do I'm just. Be like, you know what, Gary, why don't you speak in Hindi and I'll translate <laughs> that to English. That's the compromise. That's what I can do. I can do that. No, the, you just turn on Google Translate. Two minutes of me just going, I can do it really well, but like, I'm not selling myself short. No, you're selling yourself too large. <laughs> it's such a ridiculous video. But anyways, he's like, it's okay, just try your best. And he goes, I feel so lucky. And I go, I can't do that. Like I haven't gotten to clauses like that yet. I'm go Rosetta Stone yeah. hasn't gotten that far yeah. yet. You know what? I can't do like, nominative subject no, predicates. No, I can't. I can do subject predicate. I can't do that far. Right. And so already I'm like, mm, I can't do this. And so I'm like, mm hmm. And he's like, go. And I'm like, mm, no. And he goes, okay, I'm just gonna say the whole sentence. He's like, I feel so lucky to have booked this role. Oh. And I go, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And at this point you can see like sweat be on my neck and I'm just not getting it and you can see in the background of like the thing like all the executives just going like is she is so she, stupid she? she's just so dumb like, can we take it back you said you graduated high school at 13 I know. oh you graduated fifth grade at 13 sorry I missed it I misinterpreted like, she's so stupid She's just the, and so the director goes, okay, okay, let me let me take over. And she goes, she basically goes, Mujhe ye role mil gaya. And okay, I'm going, well. I, and she was like, just repeat after me. And she goes, Mujhe ye role mil gaya. And I go, Mujhe ye role. And then you immediately see my face drop. Because you can't remember it. No. Now I, you it get hit, it. I, it hit. It hit you in Hindi? It hit me in Hindi. Which so you, you're <laughs> like, you should have told me in, in Hindi. Hindi. Exactly, because I can understand it really there well. You go. Better than English. <laughs> this is a big first. I know that it's, it's become sort of controversial to talk about first because then there's this whole South Asian on South Asian. I want to be the first, I want to be the last, whatever. But you're the first South Asian to lead a Disney film. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Wow. That is. I mean, does that does that? Do you carry that, or are you like that's yeah, that's a thing that I've done, or is it present for you? Or you're like yeah. I think it's so amazing that the step has at least been taken sure. now, but I'd like I, at least for me, I think it should just pave the way for more to come. Sure. Instead of just focusing on because if you keep saying like oh the first, the first, the first, I don't right. think the next ones will ever 
end right. up coming. Right. And also now I'm just seeing so many firsts for the South Asian community. I like know. Razama getting nominated for an Oscar and, and my tray and and Miss Marvel and on Marvel. Like there's so many firsts right now. Mm -hmm. It's it, I just think in a sea of firsts, like right. It's in there. It's, it's in, in there. The montage. It's, it's definitely in, the in there. Tapestry of, of uh, South Asian. Films. Yes, it's in there, but it should pave the way for more to come. Do you think of uh, yourself as South Asian, as Indian, as South Indian? So how do you identify? What, what do you All think? three. Mm -hmm. um, uh, honestly, <clears throat> Indian probably. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it just depends on who I'm with. It depends on the context. Yeah. If okay. I'm if I'm with South Asians, if I'm with like. Afghani people and and Bengalis and sure. and Pakistani people. Then I will be like, hey, this is Thama, what actual Tamil people, yeah. <laughs> actual ones, yeah, not actual, me, not, not the imposter, yeah, not the, <laughs> the imposter. Um, then I will relate to them on mm. a ground of we're all South Asian. Sure. And if I'm with Indians, we're all Indian. And if I'm with South, South Indians, Indians, we're all South Indian. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. When you move through the world, do you think of which identity do you sort of like? Do you think of yourself as female? Do you think of, do you think of your race first? Do you think of like how do you sort of like identify? Do you when you meet people of that similar thing? So you go, hi, hey, we're both girls, or we're both South Asian, or we're both. Is there a certain way that you kind of a trait of yours that you hmm. identify with more? I think maybe being a woman probably mm -hmm. more so. A young woman. A young adult woman. A young adult woman, yes. Yeah, yes. Um, but probably that mm -hmm. I think I've identified with more. I think the reason being, it was very common for, at least I grew up in the Bay Area. Sure, and so then a lot of South Asians. A lot of South Asians, and then and then I went to India, literally yeah. Indians. Here's, yeah, There's Indians, yeah. yeah. And in both schools, in both areas, and both environments, a lot of, at least, the things that I had faced, good and bad, were related to me being a girl. So I think right. that is what I carry myself with more. Maybe in LA and in, in a sea of so much diversity, it makes more sense for me to be like, to start with, oh, I'm South Asian. Mm -hmm. But I think my upbringing has led to me, has led me to kind of start with me being a girl. A girl. Yeah, wow, well, that's, I'm glad you. I'm glad you got that question. It's a hard question to ask, and some people I think are like, "What do you mean?" But like, yeah, I mean, I should, if I would have asked in Hindi, you would have gotten it faster. But you know what I'm saying, though. My point being that you got, being you really got it. I thought you felt me on that. Like, it, it's kind of a hard thing, and given your background, your <clears throat> gender, that that is something with which you identify yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. That that does make sense. Um, do you want to play ping pong? You consider yourself a member of the of Generation Z. You yes. call it Gen Z. Yes. Okay. So there's another term for it called iGen. I've never heard of that before. Okay. So I'm, I'll I'll tell you at least what I've read, which is that it refers to a generation of people like yourself okay. who have grown up without knowing about like what this world was like before screens, before ah. iPhones, and oh, mm -hmm. because you Hence were born I in. Twenty or 2005? 2005. So if you were born in 2005, the iPhone comes out in 2007. You were two. I was two. So you don't really remember a world before smartphones. No. And no, you, I don't. Are most of your friends uh, young adults like yourself, or are they both basically your age? Or do you, do you tend to have younger or older friends? I tend to have older friends. How old? Like, I think it goes up to like 24, maybe, maximum. Oh, yeah. But, um... Maximum, like you draw a cutoff. You're like, you know what? I don't know, like at 20, like, I think at least my it just shouldn't be weird. Yeah, because that's 50% older than you are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, I just think I... I think that's what I gravitate towards, probably. Yeah. I also was homeschooled for so much of my life, and I like... I think the people I talk to the most were like my parents. So. Yeah, so and they're older than you are. I would hope so. Yeah, yes. that's the way it works. Yes. Yeah, that doesn't change per generation. No, it doesn't. Yeah, that that's, remains it's, consistent. It's still the same. Yes. Do you know the traits of your generation, like how you're perceived, and do you agree with a lot? Of, like, how do you think Generation Z is perceived, and do you agree with the perception? I think we're perceived as like stubborn and sensitive. Uh huh. And. 
Confused. Oh my god. Oh really? I hear confused so much. That yeah. you guys are confused? That we're confused. Huh. Like, okay. We think we, we've we experienced struggle and we haven't, mm -hmm. or with all of this, at least like s surfacing t this, a talk about like gender identity and all of the surfacing, I think just confused is a term I hear a lot. Okay. Um, I get stubborn, I get sensitive, but I don't like confused. That doesn't, you know. Is, I is, think, does confused hurt like that kind of yeah, I, you off when you hear that? I just don't like it because I think stubborn makes sense and I, I don't, I don't personally, you know, necessarily connect it to a negative connotation. I right. think it's okay to be stubborn. Right. The same goes with sensitive. I think being sensitive is like, it's a good trait. Sure. I, you, can, you can also say you're empathetic to other people. Yeah, feelings. sensitive can mean two different things. Like you're yeah. overly sensitive or you're understanding, you're empathetic. Yeah, exactly. Sure. But, oh my God, confused. I just, because especially the way that it's said, I'm just like, no. When they say that you're confused, is it, so I guess I was confused about, about what you were saying. Look how quickly, you do learn fast. Look at this, it's impressive. Um, do they think, like you're saying with gender, do you think it's more of a judgment then? I do. Okay. Because I don't like, think- Like confused meaning like you're wrong. Yes. That's what they mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like confused as in we know what is right mm -hmm. and you don't, but right. you think you're right and hence you're confused. Right. It's a Wait. softer way of saying you're wrong. It's, yeah. It's probably more insulting. It's more, exactly, because I just prefer if someone said you're wrong because at least then you can have an argument. Like you can right. debate it and be like, hey, I don't think I'm wrong and this is why. Right. But the moment you say confused, then anything you debate is just further solidifying your confusion. apparent confusion. Yes, your apparent confusion, yes. Yeah, alleged well, confusion. Well, the alleged confusion. That's true. But it's not. I don't think we're confused. So what do you think it's about? You said gender fluidity, is that one yeah, thing? Yeah, that's one thing. Like, I think... What's I another thing? Because that, that's a big one, though. It is a big one. Yeah, that is It big. is a big one. Mm -hmm. And I think with, with social media and stuff, I think people have just seen so many more career paths than than they've been limited to. Not just, like, influence... Not just career paths on social media, right. but... People are hearing about things from other people that, you know, jobs that didn't even exist. Right. So now they're trying to explore these more unorthodox career paths. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, the millennial generation that's unfamiliar with this is kind of like, you're confused. Right. You have too many options and now you're confused. Yeah. Well, it just maybe overwhelmed. Would yeah, be a, would be a nicer and maybe even more accurate way of saying. Yeah, it. yeah. because there are more choices. Exactly. Yeah, but it, it's not, and it's true. I think to an extent that we are confused, but again, it's like the tone with it, which it's said. Yeah, it's not confused as in, hey, you seem confused between option A, option B. Let me help you decide. No, of let course me guide not. you through that. No, 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 no. no it's no. more, you seem confused through options. And let me tell you how it is. Let me tell yeah. you how it is. Yeah, exactly. Let me educate you. Right. Right. It's Gen a Xers are hard. We're sort of hard to come down on because we didn't have as much of an identity, and we grew up at the best possible time. Like every generation will say, "We have it so hard, and we have it so good," or whatever it is. But yeah. we really had it between like my formative years were the '90s. Yeah. So this is the end of the Cold War. Okay, 91, 92, it collapses, and then the internet starts, and then 9/11 doesn't happen until 2001. That's why they called the '90s the end of history. So nothing yeah. happens. It's like, nothing. I don't know if you know Seinfeld, but it's like a Seinfeld yeah. episode where <laughs> nothing happens. Like yes. a lot of stuff happened in the 70s and 80s and then stuff started happening again. In the zeros, you had the election of a first black president. You had Web 2.0. You had the financial collapse. You had 9-11. You had all these things happen. The invention of the iPhone in like seven, eight years. Nothing like that happened in the 90s. It was just like, it was this very um, heavenly kind of abyss. Yeah. During, like where the internet was just booming and everything felt possible and you didn't get pissed off at your phone because you were just amazed that anything worked. Worked. You were just like, oh my gosh, I can look stuff up. What is online? What does that even mean? Wow. And you were just constantly in the state of bliss. And people go, no, that, they go, no, that you were. I go, no, I failed out of undergrad. Like I had a really tough time in the mid nineties, but I was aware of the, the general vibe. Wow. And I was like, this is an amazing time. And I don't know if y'all realize how amazing this is right now. And I was no, right. Yeah. Because later, it kind of sucked. <laughs> later, the world went to shit. <laughs> it did! It, it, well, well, how do you, well, let me ask you, you're the guest, how do you feel the state of the world is? I think it needs a lot of improvement. Yeah. <laughs>
That's a good way of saying it. It's a very fair, diplomatic way of putting it. Fair thing to say, but I also I always believe that it's important to acknowledge progress that's been made. I think that's good. Yeah. And I think the the perception of your generation is that that isn't done enough. No, yes, this is true. And I, I think I agree to an extent. Sure. sure. But I think that also, I don't know, I can't speak to that, you know, because sure. I I grew up in a privileged position where like I had a roof above my head and I had hot and cold water and I had food on the table and I wanted to act and I'm able to act. So right. I can sit here and be like, oh, we have to acknowledge the progress that's been made, but if you're in a more more, at least a position where you feel like the world is more against you, then it's hard for you to acknowledge the progress that's of been course. made. So I'm, I, you know, that's my perspective, but I don't think it's fair to push that onto anybody else and be like, you should be acknowledging the progress made too. You know, like, if you don't want to, don't. I know you have a roof over your head right now, but seriously, I know it's raining all over your stuff, but seriously, this is way better than it would have been 20 years ago. <laughs> you should have seen how hard it was raining before. Yeah. Which not even true because does climate change scare you? Oh my god, so much. But at the same time I just don't like anything I do feels like minimal in compa you know, anything I do feels insufficient. So oh, like whatever you would be doing whether it's for climate change. Or what have you. Yeah. It's like it's, it's such a big system and doesn't Yeah. Matter. And it's true. I mean anything I feel like we do is going to be insufficient. The problem lies with corporate industries. So, you know, we could be like plastic straws as much as we want to and Well, that's true, but 2 thirds of uh, econ spending is consumer spending. So, you this know, is also it, true. So if we all do change, it will. Yeah. Because I used to say the same thing because corporations seem so massive and they are. Yeah. But like if we do all stop using plastic straws, it will make a difference. It will make a or difference. Or if enough people. Yeah, it will make a difference. Let me ask you, since you do play, play a DJ, um, okay. what kind of music do you like? What kind of music do I like? I love R&B. That's... That's like your, your jam? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Who, who are the artists that you like the most? Um, I love Jasmine Sullivan. Mm -hmm. I also really like like jazz or like Blue Eyed Soul, like Amy Winehouse. Yeah. I guess Adele could be considered Blue Eyed Soul. Sure. Um, yeah. Soul, like Aretha Franklin, and yeah, it, her song "Respect" was just voted the number one song of all time by Rolling Stone magazine. Really? Yeah. Otis Redding wrote it, but her version is like the version. Yes. Of versions. Yes, obviously. Mm -hmm. Which DJs do you like? Nice shot. Since you were <laughs> you play DJ, which DJs do you like, or do you listen to a lot of DJ music? Did you like to spin? No, I did. I listen to a lot of DJ music. I didn't listen to a lot of DJ music. I watched a lot of DJs play, and I tried to listen to as many genres as I could, but yeah. I didn't listen to a lot of DJs. No. Okay. Because at least from our music director's perspective, he was like, I kind of want you as a Bronska to maintain your own style. Okay. And the moment you see and. He was like, as long as you know kind of the fundamentals of DJing, which is how to beat match and and it's beats per minute. And, beats per, you know. you know, once the theory and once you have like a big enough encyclopedia of music in your brain, you it, can kind of do it for yourself. And I want you to do that before you start listening to other. And DJ you feel songs. like you have that encyclopedia of music? I'm trying my yeah. best. Avantika, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Is there anything else I should have asked you that I didn't or anything else on your mind before we wrap it up here? No, I think you covered a lot of stuff. <laughs> we went we, through a lot. We covered a lot of ground. I'm right? going to go and have an existential crisis now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but at least you'll know how to do it. You will face it first as a young adult, as a female, yes. and as a South Asian, depending on the context. And then as a Gen Z. And then as a Gen Z. Here so we go. We've now, you know, we've unpacked your identity. Yes. Which is a big thing, which can be fluid, right, everybody? So there you have it. So, right. Yes, absolutely. Do you want to uh, tell people where to find you? You're welcome to speak right into the camera if you would like. Where to find me? Like my address? Yeah, specifically in <laughs> where exactly people do can track live. you down. I'm Avantika, and you can find me at I'm Avantika on Instagram. That's it. Thank you, Avantika, for joining us on What Do You Bring to the Table? I've been your host, Rajiv, and I still am.